Hello, I welcome you to our drawing class, a free tutorial that's um, mostly related to the approaching holiday, Easter. If you're not celebrating it as a holiday, we can always celebrate the springtime. But I'm Alina Smolyansky, instructor of Neurographica. So for this class, I hope you prepared my uh, tools. Unusual, we're going to use a little bit of cutting, a little bit of gluing, but if you do not have, you can just do draw the similar ideas on paper, but there will be an interesting effect that what we're doing, so they will be a little lost if we not be able to connect the pieces. We will use the symbolism of Easter eggs. Easter eggs that comes from Eastern Europe and that's a pre-Christian, prehistoric time. We do not know where they come from. As now the, this area is associated with the people who live there. It was called Kievan Rus. That's territory, major territory of Ukraine, some part of Poland and Russia, some other republics. Any country that shares the same language, Slavic language, Bulgaria as well, Montenegro, and some other countries that share very similar language. Some of them are used alphabet, that's Cyrillic alphabet, Russian, Ukrainians, and Bulgarians still use this uh, alphabet, but some countries change to Latin alphabet. So they use the same language, but uh, letters, uh, they draw Latin style, example. It's interesting about that civilization and existed thousands of years ago, and uh, they were pagans until they were converted into Christianity in the ninth century. I'm very familiar with this history because I paint icons, but before that, that they were powerful, if we believe the history, and main, mainstream history, it was a very powerful state and has a very deep culture. And that culture of painting eggs came from that time. So now I will just show a presentation about Easter eggs. So they're not only Easter related to one of the countries, many countries, many nations, many people share the same culture. They are Polish, Ukrainians, Russian, Belarusians, Bulgarian, Serbian. Some of you come from that part from, from Europe, so you still can relate to that, the culture. Uh, a little bit about Easter egg culture of Pisanki and how this name Pisanki became known. So we'll use the symbolism of Easter eggs, Pisanki, and Neurography. They're very elaborate. And I'm uh, knowing the style, how they create it. I do not know how they can, it's possible to create such intricate designs using the method. So a variety of styles, a variety of ornaments are used on Pisanki. Eggs are fragile. So no actual eggs were brought to us from that time. But ancient examples of ornaments survived. They survived on pottery, weaving, and also embroidery as well as decorating the furniture and uh, houses. The word pisanka, it comes from Ukrainian and Russian and the Polish verb to write. And it dates back, of course, such a word comes from ancient times. So that's why all the cultures, they share it. And it's right, uh, pisate, pisate, uh, to write or to inscribe. Actual uh, traditions were lost. They were passed down the generations as fall arts, as a... Uh, but how they were created, it was long, long time ago. And we can only guess or make hypothesis or comparison how everything was, it was created. In the ninth century, when Christianity was brought to that part of the world, many ornaments, and designs were adopted for Christianity. Like for example, a triangle that uh, was uh, associated with air and fire became known as Holy Trinity. And many others as well as a fish that was fish that became known as a symbol of Christianity as well, and many, many others. So the real eggs produced in very complicated process. We had a group in my icon painting class and one of the my classmates 
painted Easter eggs every Easter. So she invited us. Once I attended and I decided it wasn't for me. It was so, uh, the way she did it, it showed to us and it's totally opposite to what we create. It, it, it's a method. So we're doing it reverse. The first eggs are emptied, as you can see. And then uh, they become, they dried and the only shells remain. So they're very fragile. Then the first lines, you have to, to transfer ornament on the egg. Then the egg, as you can see, is a heated beeswax applied and it becomes like a sealer, it, it preserves the color. And then, and you can see the tools, here's the tools that hold this a small amount of heated beeswax. And then they dipped into the dye. The color first comes with a yellow. Then another one, the process repeated and ornaments, uh, which is going to be yellow, put on the egg. Then they put the next dye color, like orange or red, and then another color. And then it's continuous, continuous. Finally, it's applied with a black color, the darkest dye. And then the wax is melted on the candle and the lines became visible. Those who were painted with the wax became visible. So I like the legend about the symbols behind it. Whether it's true or not, it's hard to tell. But the idea states that when in those days, people worshiped the sun. That was, he was the main God. And only birds could fly in the sky and be closer to God. So birds were considered holy creatures, but people could not get uh, uh, birds. So what they could, they could take their eggs. And that's the egg became the symbol of the spring revival and new life. And eventually they were decorated with various symbols that you can see uh, from, from the old books that's possible to find online. So symbols could, could take different meaning, but some of them are more or less intuitive and can be, and those ones we can use in our designs today. Like for example, wheat and pine branches signify health, birds, of course, the symbol of life, happiness and spring, triangle meant air, fire, water or both, became the, the meaning of the Holy Trinity. Hands and chickens uh, about fertility, Roosters identified with masculinity strength as well as oak leaves and deer are strengths of prosperity. Fish symbols prosperity as well and as well as Christianity. There are also many various stars and the sun, the symbol of the sun that resembles the swastika. It's an old symbol and everything like rotating sun. It looks like almost like a snowflake, but they're the symbol of the sun. There is also items that was related to agriculture, household, and life in general. Of course, there were various spirals and uh, elements that could be related to flowers, branches, and leaves. Right now, we can start our art class. So I will switch to my, my drawing room camera, and we can begin. So here we are with our regular uh, tools. In addition, I have scissors. I hope everyone pr printed this uh, template for the eggs. I will cut it into pieces along the line. So we have, instead of one page, we will have four squares. So I create a line so I can cut and have like squares. So now we have four eggs separate for now. 
and eventually we're going to combine them. And, and uh, as usual in Neurographica, as we follow the steps of the formula of the basic algorithm, as usual in, in our drawings. And after that, you can start, when we finish it, you can decorate it because it's a free class. You can convert it into neuro art, but we will begin and we will base our drawing on neurographic traditional. So first we will remember that we always start with a theme as about maybe Easter, maybe about uh, springtime, the good life. And if also that will be reflected in our symbols. Now, of course, my, my I would say that my theme will be about celebrating, uh, celebrating life so all what we need, what I need, and others, what, what do we need for, to have good life? So in this is a, a time of revival and spring, and I would like to send this message to the universe with all its good intention. So I'm drawing it for myself, but at the same time, I will be happy to share it with the world. Okay, so we can take a, so, so this is our, and now we'll take each egg uh, one time, and we will draw a symbol. So I have various symbols here that can relate simple ones. So they were on the printed papers. I also have a description about this and Ukrainian Easter eggs or Slavic Easter eggs, not, not only Ukrainian. A year ago, I created a similar, I used the Easter egg mandala. So I created, that was my a drawing from a year ago. So that was, I used also various symbols and I connected, it was six, six eggs and mandala. So I will start with the easiest one. It's a spiral that presents divinity and immortality. And of course, divinity, immortality can connect it. Infinite development, infinite growth, infinite life. I just think I will use a red marker for, just for celebration. So then I will start with a spiral. Uh, so, so spiral can, or, un, unfold either clockwise or counterclockwise. There are also spirals that go from outside inside, but we will draw the one that expanding spiral from the center to the periphery. I noticed that spiral that I see on all these symbols drawings, they are counterclockwise. This is more as an explanation about evolution, more like ascent, elevation, but spirals that go clockwise, they're more connected with expansion, but in the material world. So, and I will follow on. So you, you can draw any image if you have these examples of what signs you can use. You're welcome to follow me, and you can use your own symbols as well. As well. Or you can even invent your own. Uh, okay, so I'll draw the spiral. It's expanding. And I slightly move my hand. Like a neurographic line. So I assume that everyone here knows in, a little bit about neurographica, the neurographic line and the principle of rounding. So those who are completely new, that I have other videos that explain that. So again, and I can draw more like neurographic line. So that was the first one was more like a sketch line. It's more like neurographic line. So 
if you draw a spiral, we, we start with the center and we continue in the same direction. But if you want to jump a level, you can jump on the next level as well. But continue moving forward. The spirals will start one movement and we continue forward. We're not coming back. So that the idea that we, our energy, how we transfer energy, the move it in the circle, in a spiral pattern. So what else is missing? Of course, the neurographic lines. Now we can connect this element to the environment. And we use, we work only in this square. So now, for now, we can draw the lines and uh, take them to the edge. At the same time, I round the corners, if I need. So some corners are rounded by the way we draw the lines. Again, I can continue drawing. So I draw a few lines connecting the figure to the environment, to the page. How I choose, I don't know, I just, uh, it's uh, random. Just a few lines that take us to the edge of the, the squares. Because we also have an egg. I can outline the egg shape. Okay, a few more lines. Okay, so when we've done the first one, we continue the second one. So again, I, I look some ideas to give me, to get the ideas from ancient designs. I think I will draw this one, the sun. I think many, all these designs, they represent the sun. So it could be a four. Okay, so I will draw the simple one, the four. So then the axis.
So the same idea. I start rounding and I do a, draw the neurographic line over all the sketch lines. And I start connecting so, the figure, the small figure of the sun to the environment by using the lines that take me to the edge of my square. And I can also outline the egg. around the corners. And that were formed by new lines. By the new lines that have crossed the existing lines. Okay, two, two are done, so we can continue with this third, third one, so we have two more. I like various stars, so there's the variety of stars, then the, they represent eternal life, good fortune, so any stars that you can connect to any other image, they are also eternal use and health, the various trees. There can also good health and wishes for the bountiful life, it's like wheat. Wealth, like a, a, a deer, it's wealth, prosperity, leadership. I like that the drawings are so simple, they can be easy to draw. So I think I'm going to draw the star. So this, uh, the eight pointy star, no, this six, eight. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I hope to draw eight points. Okay, this one. Well, first uh, I will start a sketch with a pencil. I can erase it later. I start with this two axes. There are simple stars as well. So. so I have four shorter ones. And also I draw So it's almost like a circle here. Then I draw longer. Right. 
for the rays of the star. And I make another um, point. It's almost like another circle that will represent um, the top, uh, the the end of the rays. So now I connect these the shorter points with the longer, and I can do it even with my marker. So I will erase them later, uh, the construction lines. Now it's uh, time to, to apply the neurographic line to outline the star. By the way, talking about triangles, if anyone is uncom feeling uncomfortable about those pointy corners, uh, the way how to treat it is uh, to draw the lines from this point and take it to the edge. If you feel like you would like to them remain sharp, you can leave them. You just say, uh, ask yourself and how you feel about those pointy corners. You can round them as well. at least inside, internally. So one of the rules and on neurographica, so if you feel like a lack of comfort and some unpleasant feeling, it's better to start rounding. So in this case, when you see so many triangles, could be unusual, as we always used everything to round everything, especially at the beginners. I mean, like beginners of your journey in neurographica for all the users in the basic user course. And for everyone who just starts drawing neurographica, we recommend uh, round everything, every intersection. And again, I take uh, the lines from the main figure, from the star to the edge. So here's my star, eternal life and good fortune. <clears throat> oh, and I need to outline the egg itself. And I round the corners if I need. There's the one lines crossing.
and I have one more left and I so you can and you can choose your own you can select any symbol or even invent your own I think I'm going to use the symbol of the tree we all love trees we've been drawing them for a long time and this can be a come eternal tree eternal youth and health So I, and I will draw a simple tree that will probably resemble the tree that we draw often in our classes. But it seems like it's similar to one of the trees here. It's a nice uh, and of course we will apply colors later we're still working uh, this on our step two uh, composition composition for our drawing but we're also combining it with the step three three of the basic uh, algorithm which is rounding. I probably connect a couple lines on the, the side. The tree looks different than it was on, on the Easter eggs, but the symbolism is here. And I outline the eggs as well. Anyway, so look, we have our four drawings, four drawings representing various symbols, some of them uh, related to about good, everything good, about good life, immortality, infinite life, the sun, the light, love, so now we will select, so you can, the X could be positioned, you can either uh, the one side or the other pointy side could be outside or inside, it's up to you. I, I don't know that there's any difference, but what's interesting now, it's trying to connect these four squares that to combine in a single image. And now we'll look for some, as look where the lines connect better. It's not necessary, but it's always very interesting to see how our neurographic lines connect.
if they are connected, maybe not. Not much on mine, at least as I position the So that's why I uh, I suggested drawing more lines and I didn't draw uh, enough lines outside lines. So the tree has many So please, the best the, mm, position for you, for your, for your feeling, how you feel like your, this egg squares, it can be positioned. If not the lines that connect, I don't have many connecting lines. So I have a better connection that here is between the star and the tree, some connect. Some more than, than others. So I think this, this is, I feel comfortable with this position. Now, and I'm ready to attach them to the paper. And that's why I ask about glue stick. Or you can use the tape, a piece of tape. So the idea is whatever we are drawing something separately, even like our desires, our intention, thinking about that separately, now we're combining them into one image. The next step, the first one will connect the lines that close, that almost connect. So here I have almost connection here and here. Maybe we extend. The lines that they extend towards each other and connect. It's too far, so I will. It's not, at least those who are close. And then now when we connected the lines that almost connected to each other, like we start connecting the lines to the nearest figure. For example, here I have a extension, the line goes to the edge, but it doesn't connect. So I will connect the figures. Also using the neurographic line as, as usual.
So this tree that I notice how the, that's whether its root is almost connected to the symbol of divinity, evolution, which uh, they're related in a way. The tree, as we studied in, in many cultures, represents development, growth, So I think there's a strong relationship between these two images. Yes, and as a spiral unfolds, it also uh, grows. Indication of growth, progress. So now it's a very, also a very good time to reflect what happens when we connect those various images, symbols, not images, symbols. Where pieces of paper connect, it's not easy. We have a seam here. I will probably continue rounding more later, but now we will continue with our drawing. It's probably related to that feeling that I want to express something and I, I can't find voice and it's something it's trying to emerge. Or maybe something I'm... Um, I'm working on them myself. Maybe I'm trying to puri purify myself and from some uh, thoughts, old experience, and that it comes like coughing. That could be. Yes, I'm going through the process of a change that always comes when you start thinking about your life and doing various practices. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> so, so far, uh, the four parts that are drawing are uh, connected. Now we can connect it more by applying colors as a normally do neurographic at a step when we integrate our drawing with with the colors. So I probably think of some it's more about Easter, about life and, and related more like red related. And especially my drawing is done in red. Yes, uh, the indicator flow of red. Yes, so, uh, so usually I apply it lightly. 
just testing whether I like this color here and whether I like it conditioning in this areas. Of course, the sun is a bright, light yellow. Like I need a few more neurographic lines here. Of course, sunny yellow, connecting to the red, the orange, oh, red, orange. I choose, I use mostly my intuition in relation like um, the tree, so the green, life, uh, the springtime. Sunshine. Like a need to use different shades.
So our class is almost approaching the end. So this always selecting colors always takes longer. Um, to do it uh, nicely. So, and I will leave it as <coughs> a color uh, a coloring stage later. Well, let's start coloring. It's hard to stop now. No. So then I'll finish it, the coloring stage later. So now I would like to you know, draw a couple more elements. If what's uh, good. So again, if you're familiar with mirror graphic enough and you feel like you need extra support, we can always draw the field lines. The field lines that carry more power, that we align ourselves with the forces of nature. So we were drawing about the sun, divinity, the stars, trees. So and probably the center, and it's me like a I think that's where all the figures connect. That's probably will be the central point. And I will draw the field line. So again, you can listen to yourself if you can draw the field lines differently. It's, it's fine. It's, a, your, it's your choice. And I will draw the field lines like almost radiating from the center towards all the, uh, the elements. So many lines exist, and I just use the existing lines. And where I need, I just add the field line. So I use the lines that are in the drawing, and I draw new lines. And I draw them from, from the center outside. It's easy for the tree because of the branches, because then the nature of the shape. Like an oh, I you know it's like as I drew this line, especially it's quite uh, thicker than other lines through the star. Uh, like uh, of course it's um, energizing, uh, and I will draw the lines that from the center. Can also outline more, make the eggs, the shape stronger. So 
and I round the integrating the, the field line with the shape of the egg. So in this drawing we do not need to look for anything round and uh, egg shape as we often start looking in our neurographic drawings, those who are familiar with it, <clears throat> especially with the basic user course, the algorithm for removing inner constraints when we start looking for round shapes and for egg shapes. And this, in this drawing, we have, we don't have to look for their, they're here they were from the very beginning. Okay, so almost, no? So then I will probably stop on this stage and I will continue working after the class. And probably many of you will do the same because when the drawing requires more attention and. can even use a fine liner and a nice rounding, especially with the lines where the lines are thinner. And know maybe I would like to draw even Final lines to give it an extra connection without overpowering the drawing, leaving the eggs more important and adding the background lines with a finer marker. That will be done, of course, when after the class when all this fine details so what i can say about this um, uh, resolution and reflection before we finish uh, i would say that these shapes and i practiced of course yesterday with this um to a couple of uh, options, how I was drawing it, I, I felt empowered by this drawing. So I had a couple, so one of them, so I did, it was my from yesterday, so one of my practice. Maybe it was this like this. Yeah. So I said yesterday I felt empowered by it and I would like to work a little bit more on this drawing to make it feel it's as strong and as communicate for me as well. Uh, and I will include my final drawing into this uh, video because when I finish it and of course I, I share it in my uh, group my profile. It's one of the techniques to remember. So when you draw, uh, have drawings, you can combine like a few, especially if you're working on the case, I'd say uh, with a drawing, so traditional drawings. And then you can put all of them together and see how they connect. And you may even try to draw the field lines through the series of your drawings. Let's say that we're all celebrating life, love, kindness, compassion. 
So I wish you all the best. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you for your support.